Today we want to talk about equilibrium reactions. Equilibrium reactions are one in which our reactants could react to form our products and at the same time our products could react together to form back our reactants. As so we have the ability to go in either directions in this reaction. Now equilibrium reactions will end with a constant concentration of my reactant and product. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're equal to each other. What it means is that they reach some fixed steady state. So let's talk about it a little bit more over here. So as we talk about equilibrium reactions, we see that there's this place where we get to this what we call dynamic equilibrium. And that's a point where the rate that we're creating products, so our forward rate, is the same that we're creating reactants. The speed that we're getting rid of my reactants is the same as the rate that I'm producing my reactants in the reverse direction. Likewise, the rate that I'm producing my products is equal to the rate that I'm getting rid of my products in the reverse direction. So at this place where my rates now become equal to each other, we have a constant fixed concentration of my reactants and products. And that's what we define as dynamic equilibrium. So it's a dynamic equilibrium because we still have reactions happening in the forward and reverse directions, but we have a constant concentration, again, because those rates are equivalent to each other. So let's jump back here and look at one of these reactions uh, that exhibits dynamic equilibrium, where we can see something go in the forward or reverse directions. So one of the things that's really important when we consider for equilibrium reactions is the amount of reactants and products we see at equilibrium. Are they equal to each other? Is there a lot more reactants or a lot more products at equilibrium? Well that's defined by our equilibrium constant, uppercase K. The equilibrium constant defines and describes how much reactants and products we find at equilibrium. And we're going to find during our class time that that directly connects back to our rate constants and our rate law expressions for the forward and reverse reactions. Because how fast those tend to happen is gonna inform us a little bit about the relative amounts we might find of our reactants and products at equilibrium. Does our equilibrium favor the reactants? That would mean we have more reactants in equilibrium than products. Does our equilibrium favor our products? We're gonna find more or higher concentrations of our products at equilibrium. These are a lot of the ideas that we're gonna talk about as we study equilibrium and the amounts of reactants and products we find at equilibrium. And then that goes back to our equilibrium constant. So these are a lot of the bigger topics we're gonna discuss as we talk about equilibrium reactions. There's lots of different kinds of scenarios where we find these equilibrium reactions. We find them within our body and buffer systems. We find them in the environment when we look at ocean chemistry. We find them in the air when we look at the atmospheric reactions that are happening. We find them in water, we find them in food. Right? These equilibrium reactions are all over the place. And understanding equilibrium is gonna really help us as we think about our understanding of biological systems, especially uh, buffer systems, environmental systems, where we look at these two-way reactions that are influenced by other forces, specifically Le Chatelier's principle. And these are gonna be all big ideas that are gonna be really helpful to understand the world around us. So I hope you're just as excited as I am as we get to study this wonderful world of equilibrium.